Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hello if you're new here, it's lovely to have you. I would love for you to stick around and join my channel by hitting that subscribe button that's down here somewhere in red. It just means that I pop up in your subscription box and there's no pressure to watch every single video that I put up. You can just pick and choose the ones that interest you. But overall, it would really help me out to get that subscriber number up so that I can continue to make these kind of videos. So, I thought today, as you can see, I'm in a slightly different angle, um, but I thought today I would sit down and talk a little bit about trimester four, which is very much a subject that isn't always talked about. And I think partly it's because it can be quite a difficult period in your life, especially on that journey. Um, but also you don't think about yourself. In, within that time um, you've got this tiny little baby that needs you all the time and they always say when your baby's sleeping you should sleep too I'm not quite sure who come up with that idea because how the hell do you get anything else done um, but it is a challenging part of becoming a mum or a dad um, but Obviously, in this video, I'm going to talk more about becoming a mum with it. Um, but yeah, if you wonder why I keep looking over or if you hear funny noises, Nelly is currently in her Moses basket, supposedly having a nap. We have now been trying for the last half an hour and she still hasn't fallen asleep yet. So something tells me this nap is going to be missed this morning, but she's happy in herself to just lie there at the minute. So hoping she might fall asleep soon but yeah if you can hear any funny noises or you wonder why I keep looking that way that is why because I just keep seeing this leg come up in the air I'm like what's that <laughs> um but yeah and I also thought I'd just touch on as well just in general life with a newborn obviously I did film a few vlogs which I love looking back on and seeing how small she is she is now nearly four and a half months old um it's gone so so quickly I can't believe how quickly it's gone and yeah she's got her own little personality a lot of attitude i don't know where on earth she gets that from um but she's just a joy to be around 90 percent of the time i would say overall i found the newborn stage actually quite easy like this isn't me bragging in any way and i know some people find it really really difficult but in terms of looking after nelly the newborn especially the new newborn stage i found so so easy because let's face it she just Ate, slept and needed her bum changed like other than that she just wanted to cuddle but to be fair she was never really like a real cuddly baby um she'd quite happily just go down in her Moses basket um and yeah I think the only thing that I struggled with in those early days was the fact of having to wake her up for her feeds before she obviously gained her birth weight um because she just wouldn't wake up. I tried everything under the sun, the tickling of the feet, the tickling of the neck, something cold, like nothing would wake her, um, which was a bit of a pain. And I used to stress over it. I remember like getting myself kind of all worked up because feed time was coming and I had to wake her up, etc. Um, and I think that lasted for me about three weeks. Normally it's quite a lot of the time it's, um, after like a week or so but Nelly actually dropped weight she like gained her birth weight and then dropped again the week after so I had to continue to wake her up I can't tell if she's asleep no she's still awake um so that took a little bit longer so that was probably my only bit that I really stressed over in those early days the other thing that made it stressful was the amount of appointments that we had um which I was kind of unprepared for. Obviously I had the paperwork from the midwife that said like what appointments she would have and stuff. Um, but I was just so unprepared for exactly how many appointments she'd have, you know. I felt like I was out of the house. Every, well, to be fair, I think for like two weeks straight I was out of the house every day for something. Um, so like whether it was, I think the midwife came here 
twice, I think. It was meant to be once, but there was crosswires, so she came out twice. Um, I had to go back to the hospital to collect the medication for Nelly. Then I had like two or three appointments at the midwife hub centre, which is a good half an hour from us, and obviously I don't drive, so that was kind of a bit of a pain. It wasn't like it was just down the road, you know. I think if it was just like across the road or down the road or something, it wouldn't have been as so bad. But when you're like travelling in a round trip for about an hour to then sit there for like another half an hour, like it just felt like a big chunk of my day had gone each day because in addition to that I had to prep and make sure that everything that we needed to take was ready, you know, like bottles, nappies, you know, there was just so, so much in those early days. Um, the, yeah, those appointments are brutal. When all you really wanted, well, all I really wanted to do, I can come out of focus actually now, but all I really wanted to do was sleep and rest because obviously I'd had like an emergency C-section. I hadn't been prepared for it. I didn't do any research and yeah, it was just, intense yeah that's all i can really say um i feel like i was lulled into a false sense of like oh it's so easy and all things like that um because she was really easy aside from the like waking up thing i think she's asleep now cool um aside from the like trying to get her to wake up in those early days I feel like just after that when like I didn't have to wake and she'd wake on her own I was lulled into that false sense of this is easy you know because I can't fully really remember what week it was I want to say it was around either six or eight I think but Nellie had colic and she had colic so so bad um yeah it was horrible like I'd been in tears Ash had been in tears, like it was horrible to see this like little newborn baby that you loved so so much that was a part of you screaming in so so much pain um, and the first time that it happened like we were all set to go to the hospital and then I, something in my brain was just like I think this is colic, you know, I don't know if it was mother's instinct or what, I'm not sure but I googled the, the symptoms and I was like this is exactly what she's doing um, so good old Amazon Prime to the rescue. I managed to get some Infocold drops, which really, really helped in those early days. And then I feel like she got used to it quite quickly um, and almost like become immune to it. Because obviously with Infocold drops, you give them before or after every feed. And as a like tiny baby like that, they're feeding so much. And I just feel like her body after a while was like, this ain't gonna do anything. Um, so then we moved on to grout water and that first time we used grout water oh my god I don't think I'll ever forget it so I gave her the the right dosage that she needed and I literally put it in her mouth she swallowed it and no more than three seconds she had literally pooed everywhere it was like all out it was at first like punami as well it was all out of her nappy it was all up her back it was all over us like it was just intense <laughs> but thankfully it's never had that effect again like the grout water does help her with her wind when she needs it and we still use it now like occasionally not as often um but yeah it does help but thankfully it's never that's never happened again but it did make me so nervous for the first like few weeks after that time because I was like I don't want to be out and about and like she literally just coat the pram kind of thing you know um but thankfully it didn't happen again so Ash was home for about a week it turned out in the paternity leave because obviously in the UK you get two weeks paternity leave that's like statutory statut I can never say that word um but one of those weeks was pretty much taken up with um, me being induced because I was in hospital for nigh on a week like by the time it had all kicked off and everything um, and then Nellie was born so it meant that he only really had a week with her which I'm quite sad about I wish like in hindsight that we booked 
um, like an extra week then he could have like I don't want to say bonded with her more because he did bond with her I kind of like I did bond with her but I left a lot of the like stuff to him to start with because I knew he only had that week and obviously it's different for men anyway I you know carried Nelly for nine months um, but also like I was so so sore like I couldn't change a nappy or anything like that it was just horrendous so um, yeah I'm glad of that but yeah he only really got a week and then as it was coming to the end of that week I was hoping that my mum might have been able to come up and help but obviously that wasn't able to happen because my nan was sadly in hospital um, and yeah it just it just wouldn't have worked and I think in hindsight and me and Ash funny enough were talking about this the other day I think in hindsight me moving so far away and also the fact that my mum was unable to come up um, probably did me the world of good in the long run I probably didn't feel like it at the time um, and especially that first day when I was left with Nelly all by myself like it was scary like I, I got through it fine and I you know I vlogged it um, but yeah it was so so scary to be just left to get on with it I guess you could say um, but I do think it did well because it meant that I could get to know her on a completely new level um, and I kind of got into like a little routine with her obviously a loose routine you can't really get into a routine with a newborn but I started to do like the same things each day so like to be fair it's something I still do now like when she wakes up for the day um, I get a dress like washed and dressed we put cream on her and stuff and then she comes down and we do tummy time as her, like her first activity which then usually tires her out for nap time but obviously oh, white noise is finished um, obviously that doesn't always go to plan as today would show but that's exactly what I've done hence why right now my living room looks like a steak because she did tummy time this morning um, and then like after tummy time she would have a bottle we'd have a little cuddle and she'd go back for a nap and I feel like had somebody else been here I don't think I would have got into that somewhat routine so easy um, so I do think it did me the world of good in the long run um, yeah so if you're worried about being on your own or anything like that like just hang in there because it will it will turn right in the end um, but yeah so that's kind of like how I found that little newborn stage I guess you could say a little rundown on that um, in terms of the fourth trimester there's not really symptoms as such I guess but I will just like run through a little bit I've got like some notes of how I was feeling etc um, and like I said the main thing was that first week was so so stressful trying to remember all these appointments like I was in pain I was trying to remember to take my pain medication obviously I'd had a c-section so I had to have like the blood clot injections um, which as a side note oh my god it was so so painful and they bruised really bad to the point that I can still see some of the bruises um, and I don't know if they're ever going to go to be honest or whether they're just now a permanent mark I'm not too sure but that's definitely spurred me on that if we have any more kids if we're lucky enough to that I'm going to be bouncing on that ball a million times more to try and get the babies out naturally because the c-section side of it was absolutely fine even the healing section like I could cope with but those injections like I used to dread waking up every morning in a sense because I knew that those injections would be the first thing that needed to happen um, yeah it really wasn't pleasant but trying to get out to those appointments whilst trying to get to grips with being a new mum I'd never really held well I hadn't held like a young young baby I think the earliest I'd hung, held a baby was like six months when like their neck was fully sort of 
holding the head up and they didn't feel as fragile or anything like that so try and get to grips with being a new mum um whilst trying to go out to these appointments trying to remember what stuff i needed to take like it just added so so much stress onto my shoulders um within that first couple of weeks but i did find that once those appointments had settled down that um it did it did feel a bit easier a bit less stressful i was quite teary to start with um for obviously numerous reasons number one was how the hospital had treated me um i did go into that in my labor story part two i think um just yeah how like post care had been like i was still really upset about that it still made me feel really sad um on that score i was also like quite upset at the fact that I couldn't get Nelly to latch and because of where we live and having to rely on Ash to even get me to anywhere I couldn't get any help with that um, so I was sad that that journey came to an abrupt end because when she was first born and she latched straight away and she was on for like 45 minutes you know I thought I can do this you know um, and sadly that just wasn't the case however in hindsight using the pump actually worked better for me because it meant I got some rest when I needed to. I wasn't restricted in the sense of she had to be feeding off of me. Um, other people could obviously like give her the bottle and stir. Oh, I'm guessing the sun's come out. She's just like lit up really white. <laughs> um, and it's just easier, I think, personally to express it takes a lot on the mental toll um especially in those early days when you've got to remember to consistently do it um but like now looking back i'm literally just like it worked well for us and i'd be happy to do it again with any future children um although i will obviously try and get them to latch but yeah pumping actually worked quite well for me and it, it fitted in nicely with our routine like I pumped when she was napping um, I built up quite a good supply and yeah I'd say those early like tearful days of that like now I'm sat back thinking I shouldn't have got so upset you know but you just don't know that in the beginning um, and obviously I was very very tearful because my nan who I was very very close to like all my life oh I'm getting choked up um very very close to all my life sadly in hospital hospital didn't treat her as they should have done which is another like bone of contention so I was stressing over that because obviously I couldn't go in because the ward had covid and I just couldn't risk Nelly having covid despite the fact that um obviously I had it when I was given birth but yes yeah, so that basically that was how I got COVID my mum caught it in hospital like my mum and dad my uncle like loads of family members had gone in to visit and then they caught COVID my mum and dad came up the day before I was induced um and I caught COVID from them so like that's kind of how it all came about um but yeah they didn't treat her the best there was quite a few errors on their part um, which was making me sad and stressing me out over that anyway I did get to go in and see her just before I had Nelly we literally like bombed it down um, to the hospital which probably like if my consultant had known that he would probably have gone spare the fact that I travelled so far when I was like imminently due to give birth but like I said to like my family and that at the time if I go into labour I'm in a hospital they'll just have to sort me out there rather than up here um so I did get to say my goodbyes which I'm I'm happy about like she wasn't awake but I did do several video calls afterwards and we sent videos of Nelly and Nan was waving at her and And we were, you know, she was told that Nellie had a middle name, like named after Nan. 
um, man was like blowing her kisses and stuff on the videos so yeah like I knew that she knew that Nelly existed so yeah and then she sadly passed away when Nelly was about two weeks old um which I had a gut feeling she was gonna because she started to pull through and I was like oh okay but Nan had always said to me it's one in one out um and my Nan's net was never wrong about anything like when I look back now and I think of the stuff that she said like she was never wrong about anything she knew and I think she was just holding on making sure that Nellie came safely into the world and was healthy etc because as soon as she was signed off from the midwives Nan passed away um, and I don't think that was a coincidence you know so as you can tell <laughs> like even now it still makes me teary but I was definitely teary back then so the midwives were keeping an extra vigilant eye on me um but like I said to them I felt all right like with Nelly um and like that side of things I was just more teary because obviously now nah, you know and I couldn't be there for her and um yeah but I was all right myself like I don't think it affected bond but they were definitely keeping an extra eye on me in case it turned out to be more than just a little bit of baby blues. My mental health did definitely take a toll when colic started like I mentioned earlier like I cried, Ash cried like it was so so stressful I dreaded feeding her because I knew what would come afterwards um yeah it was just it was hard work like we were tag teaming it but I feel like we just needed that third pair of hands that could just take over for 10 minutes um just to like give us a break I remember the first time I had like a bit of free time and I could hear Nelly like screaming um because of the colic and I was literally just like forget the free time I'm going back down and so that then meant that I didn't get a break Ash didn't really get a break because when he was coming in from work he was trying to not trying but he was taking over to try to give me a break um but then neither of us were getting a break because we were just so like concerned over Nelly and stuff um so yeah I think it definitely took its toll on our mental health my milk came in on day four um so it was a little bit later than maybe average and I was starting to panic over that thinking I'm not getting any like proper milk it's just still like colostrum um, but it did come in on day four which I was so so grateful for and I managed to um, get enough milk successfully for three weeks and then I got mastitis which I knew was obviously gonna be more of a risk because I was pumping because they don't normally recommend you pumping until past six weeks when your supply is a little bit more regulated mastitis for me was a blur I'm not gonna lie I remember feeling like sore I had sore boobs um I was on antibiotics anyway because they thought I'd had a womb infection I think I mentioned that I don't know if I did mention it in my fourth trimester with um in my labour story or not but basically I think it was like three days in or something like that I had a heavy bleed which now I know is normal but I wasn't 100% sure so we phoned for an ambulance there was literally blood everywhere it was all over the bathroom floor like it was like running out of me it wasn't even dripping um, and it was literally like someone had pulled a plug it was literally that simple um, and so we phoned for an ambulance that was a whole issue because they said right we'll get an ambulance to you straight away then I had a phone call back from like the station thing saying that they didn't have any ambulances available they could send me a taxi and they would pay for it um, 
but they didn't have any taxis available at that time the taxi would be about 40 minutes ash was going absolutely spare because obviously if it was something serious and i was losing that amount of blood like i wouldn't have lasted all that much longer um so he just like put the phone down on, on them and was just like forget it i'll take her so they said that's fine go to, straight to a and e so we went to a and e had to wrap nelly up this is like 11 12 o'clock at night wrap nelly up went straight to a and e got to a and e and they were like i don't know why the like um people on the phone had told you to come to a and e you need to go to labor ward so I was like right okay but thankfully she put me in a wheelchair like the receptionist put me in a wheelchair and was like I'm gonna take you myself like I'm not risking it I'm a mum myself like I'm taking you I was like okay thank you and um, so she took me the back way which was a lot quicker it meant also that I got seen straight away there was no way in um, and they did like a scan and everything and everything looked normal they weren't like obviously 100% sure so they gave me a course of antibiotics just in case that there was like some sort of womb infection or uterus infection anything like that um so they gave me these antibiotics which in turn helped cure the mastitis um which i'll be forever grateful for because it meant that i could take those antibiotics pretty much straight away um but yeah in terms of like the mastitis i was delirious ash was at work and I remember having Nelly like laid on my side like I was like this and I was on my side um, but with my legs in such a way that I wouldn't roll over because obviously I didn't want to squash her but she needed me but I wasn't really with it enough I literally I think I changed her nappy like literally twice which I know I should have changed her more but I literally physically couldn't do it like my head felt like it was spinning um, I was so so hot I was like clammy I was it was vile like my night dress was ringing wet the pillows were soaking wet my hair looked like I had come out of a shower um I had like the most horrendous like flu feeling and I still needed to look after Nelly because there was no one else that could do it um so yeah she literally just laid in my arms whilst i was on my side all day i had like the bottles that i could feed um and that was it like literally we just got through it by sleeping like the pair of us um and i just drank water. well i don't even think i drank water because i think from what i remember i remember being laid in bed really fast Dave, but i just didn't have the energy to even sit up um so i didn't end up going to the kitchen to get like a drink it was only when ash come home and he saw the state i was in he couldn't believe it he was all set to take me to the hospital and i was like this is definitely mastitis um so yeah, i think i like slept basically on and off for two or three days until the antibiotics kicked in enough that like they did some good um but yeah it wasn't pleasant it's definitely something I don't want to have to go through again but I'm glad like I managed to get through it all okay, all okay with the antibiotics and I kept pumping and I managed to clear the ducts that were obviously blocked that caused the infection um, and we did come out of it the other side so I'm grateful for that because I honestly thought I was dying at one point. My scar was so so sore when it was healing um, but I was able to move around mainly thanks to the strong painkillers that I had and yeah I could definitely tell when I'd done too much like my body let me know like it hurt even through the painkillers so it was kind of just like a balancing act of getting things done but not doing too much and that was definitely a learning curve um I came out of hospital like I know Ash was mad at me for this but I came out of hospital literally walked down to the car pushing Nelly with the pram Ash was putting Nelly in the car and I lifted the pram wheels up and put them in the boot I'd literally had a c-section eight hours before <laughs> which in hindsight if I just like, seen someone else doing that I would be like what the hell is she doing um, but I just didn't think because it didn't hurt when the painkillers were in your system you end up just carrying on 
and then it's not until afterwards you're like I've done too much by which point it's too late because you're in pain um so it was definitely just that like working it out and balancing out just getting the right mix kind of thing um but yeah at one point I do remember I was having a shower and I was shaving down there which was a delightful experience being able to even see down there slightly um because it had been so long like with this huge baby bump and I honestly thought I'd ripped in the shower because I pulled up to like make down there a bit more taunt and yeah there was like blood and stuff and I thought I'd torn it um which I might have done slightly I don't know but it stopped bleeding after like a couple of seconds it was only a tiny little bit um but yeah I would come out of the shower like I think I've ripped myself Ash was like you what <laughs> Um, so yeah looking back now I can laugh on it but at the time like oh, it was just intense I did get an infection um, funny enough just after the mastitis it literally felt like one thing after another it was like the stress of going to all these appointments then I got mastitis and then my c-section scar got slightly infected um, but thankfully because I was on the antibiotics anyway for like all the various things um, that cleared up the infection enough and I literally just like cleaned it several times a day as well um, and it healed up really well in the end so I'm grateful for that but when I like saw that I was like infected and it was smelly and horrible I was literally just like it's not another thing I was like this is not what motherhood is supposed to be like but in reality it is it's just that when you're in that like trimester four bubble you don't think about it um, like I you know I wasn't in any way shape or form able to talk about it so then if people don't talk about it you don't know until you're in the thick of it um but actually it isn't very pleasant a lot of the time and trimester four is a lot more than just having cuddles with a cute baby that's for sure my mental health definitely improved it would have been around the like eight to ten week mark i would say um it was mainly when Nelly started sleeping for slightly longer stretches, more than like a couple of hours. Um, because yeah, I was getting more sleep and clearly that was what I needed to help my mental health. I was running on zero before that, like, well, beyond zero probably. Um, but yeah, as soon as she started sleeping that little bit more, it meant that I could see light at the end of the tunnel I guess. I remember the first time she slept through the night um, we had gone down funny enough for Nan's funeral it was the first time we had gone down we were staying in Nan's house um, I had put her down to sleep and then obviously fallen asleep myself and I woke up in the morning like my boobs were massive because obviously I hadn't woken up to pump because I normally just pumped straight after Nellie's feed um, I hadn't woken up to pump they were massive they were leaking everywhere and I honestly thought I was like oh my god what's happened to her um and she was absolutely fine she was just enjoying her snooze um and I think that kind of helped like set me up for that day anyway because obviously it was a long upsetting day um but yeah she just like slept all the way through and then after that I was like oh she's gonna sleep through the night she didn't she went backwards slightly and was sleeping like four hour stretches but that was still to me a lot better um so I was happy with that and like now she sleeps through the night the majority of the time sometimes she'll wake up because she's cold or cause she wants her dummy back in like this morning she woke up at four because she wanted her dummy that was fine I put her dummy in she went back to sleep straight away I went back to sleep um, and she slept through till 7.30 then. Sometimes she'll wake up if she wants a bottle. Um, but yeah, other than that, like, she has been super, super easy. I say as I'm tired. <laughs> That's a whole other story. That's me catching up on sleep. I didn't get at the weekend. Um, but yeah, so definitely helped my mental health. Helped me see things differently. And I think I did a little bit of a mind shift as well in that I realised this was like just a chapter in my life and it wasn't always going to be this like badness of not being able to sleep and things so I kind of just thought do you know what the house can stay messy 
um, as long as I can have something to eat and drink each day, as long as Nelly's happy and healthy and thriving, like nothing else matters. Um, if someone comes in in my house as a state, they'll just have to deal with it because I've got a newborn and that's my priority at the minute. Um, which I think definitely helps shifting that mindset slightly because I'm a lot more laid back when it comes to the cleaning and tidying than what I was. And I think that was needed definitely. Um, yeah, so my house will be clean and tidy in about 20 years time. Um, and until then I'm just going to live in the chaos and embrace it because I know how lucky I am to be in this situation um, and I'm forever grateful for that to be honest. And then the last thing that I wanted to mention is something that you will see in the vlogs at the minute. I think I've uploaded possibly some where I've already mentioned it, I've definitely filmed some um, and that is postpartum hair loss which is extreme like I know people said it was bad like my don't get me wrong my hair has always fallen out um my friend Ellie who on here is Ellie's little word would be able to vouch for me when I say that when, when we were working together she'd be constantly like pulling off a hair here and there where like it was just falling out um so like I was used to it a little bit but nothing like postpartum hair loss so it started literally the day Nelly hit four months the, like literally the, the day and yeah it's not as bad as what it was it's slowing down slightly touch wood <laughs> um, but like for the first week and a half I honestly thought I was going to go bold like it literally looked like I'd grabbed like a big chunk and just cut it out there was that much like I was having to empty my hairbrush like three or four times each session of brushing um, to be able to like get it all the fallout out of my hair um, and that stressed me out and it still stresses me out slightly because obviously my hair's falling out it would be on like the sofa it would be on the bed it'd be on my clothes and then it's getting wrapped around Nelly's fingers and toes which obviously is a safety issue um, so yeah like that stressed me out slightly slightly plus at the same time as me starting to lose my hair she got into the bit of grasp and everything so she's yanking on my hair making it worse um so yeah it's a whole thing and I'm smiling about it now but I was crying about it like a week or two ago but I kind of just accepted again that it's part of being a new mum um and there's nothing I can do about it like there's no quick fix no matter what people say um, on like product things, oh it will help with postpartum hair loss, nothing will, it's gonna fall out. Um, I think you can look after your hair a little bit more, um, I've definitely found that's helped but it's still gonna fall out, like that is just a natural part of it. Um, but in terms of like looking after my hair I chose a different shampoo that was more nourishing and did repairs on damaged hair because my hair was getting frizzy with it. Um, so. I was using that I've been using a hair mask twice a week um, I also use the Avon split ends hair oil I think any hair oil can help just like to work into the hair that little bit more again to stop the dryness and the brittleness um, and other than that I've literally just been brushing it like twice a day two or three times a day even it on like bad days just so that my hairbrush is picking up the majority of the fallout um, rather than like Nelly yanking it out and they do say not to tie your hair up but I've had to tie mine up because like I say she's just pulling it out otherwise um, but yeah whilst those things obviously can help the condition of your hair there's nothing that you can really do um, to stop the actual hair loss it's just part and parcel of it and unfortunately it's just nature's way of taking back all that lovely thick glossy hair that you would have had in the third trimester by the fourth trimester it's like someone saying nope you've had that for too long um we're taking it back so yeah but i think that's everything i wanted to mention in this video obviously it's been a long rambly one but i kind of had a lot to cover and yeah i wanted to delve in depth a little bit about my fourth trimester and how i found life with a newborn 
um, because yeah it's just not talked about enough um, so yeah I hope you found this useful or insightful or I hope I haven't scared you in any way because I'm smiling I'm happy like you do get through it it is relatively a short period it doesn't feel like it at the time it feels like it's you know like years worth of it um, but overnight things just suddenly change um, similar to like Nelly suddenly sleeping through the night like you think it's getting really really bad and then all of a sudden it just switches up and changes and that's definitely what I'm learning like it each thing is a phase um, but yeah all phases come to an end um, but thank you so much for watching please remember to like and subscribe and I'll be back again tomorrow bye bye Thank you.